Warning, this process is very dangerous. Acids are corrosive and the fumes can be deadly. I am 303. Thank you for watching. So I have here measured out 150 milliliters of sulfuric acid. This is the sulfuric acid that I purified in the sulfuric acid project video. And this is crystallized potassium nitrate, very pure. It was actually crystallized from the spectricide stump remover, which in and of itself is actually fairly pure potassium nitrate. With these ingredients, we're going to make some nitric acid, or at least we're going to try to. The goal here is to start with really pure products so that hopefully our end result is pure, although it won't be the most concentrated. I really like potassium nitrate because it's KNO3, or if you were to say it, it would be NO3. When you crystallize potassium nitrate, it makes long, thin crystals. You could really skip this step if you're using a product that's pretty much pure potassium nitrate to start with. The crystals were weighed out to 150 grams, and we're going to dump them into the large beaker. A side note, if you have time to crystallize them, all you have to do is boil them in water until they dissolve and then let them cool and the crystals will form on their own. You want to use about two parts water to one part product. And now we're going to add just enough water to get these crystals to redissolve. I put in about 100 milliliters of water here. And we're going to turn the super scientific hot plate on because the solubility of potassium nitrate greatly increases with heat. And every time I've said water so far, I mean distilled water. Because specifically in this, if you use tap water that has fluoride or chlorine in it, it can really mess everything up. So only distilled water. The reaction of dissolving potassium nitrate in water is interesting because it's an endothermic reaction, meaning that it actually gets cold. But with the super scientific hot plate, we should be able to reverse that quickly and get the crystals to dissolve. This is just a few minutes later and you can see that they're really starting to get dissolved and the frost is gone from the sides of the beaker. Where I am, I would be able to purchase nitric acid and have it delivered if I wanted to. But the average price is about $70 per liter. All total in these ingredients, I have invested about $4. Obviously, I'm not gonna make an entire liter because in this beaker here, I have about 200 milliliters, plus I have the 150 milliliters of sulfuric acid. For a total of 350 milliliters. It's just about dissolved so here comes the part that's kind of fun and kind of scary at the same time. The solution is still pretty hot because we're just now turning it off so carefully pour it in to the sulfuric acid a little at a time and make sure that you pour it into the sulfuric acid and not the other way around. Because if you do it the other way around, there's a good chance that it could splash up and burn you. It was already warm from the hot plate, but pouring it into the sulfuric acid is actually an exothermic reaction. So it actually gets hotter just by pouring it into the sulfuric acid. So we're going to let it cool off before we do anything else. And there's already crystals growing in the bottom of the beaker by the time it cools to about room temperature. It may still be a little bit warm. But at this point, we're going to put it in a plastic bag. And this is what's going to make my nitric acid video a little bit different. We're going to put it in the freezer. This would have been ready in about four or five hours, but I had things to do. The idea is when it reaches about 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius, all of the 
what's now potassium sulfate will settle out and what we'll have left is HNO3 or nitric acid. As soon as I took it out of the bag, I could smell the familiar smell of nitric acid. So while it's still very cold, we're going to pour it off into this flask and try to do it slowly so that none of the crystals come out. I would like to say, oh, look at the fumes. I made 99% pure white fuming nitric acid. But nah, dude, it's just cold. Fortunately, all of the crystals stayed in the bottom of the beaker in one solid mass. If you notice, I'm not wearing gloves here. And it's because the only gloves I have are nitrile gloves. And nitrile gloves don't mix well with nitric acid. However, I would recommend wearing some vinyl gloves as they will hold up much better and protect your hands. But I would rather wear no gloves than have an accident with nitrile gloves on my hands. So at this point, I can't wait to test this. I have a few little pieces of copper inside of this 50 milliliter beaker. So I'll pour a little bit of the freshly made nitric acid over the copper pieces in the little beaker and see if anything happens. Oh wait, there's no violent reaction? Did I do something wrong? Did my sense of smell trick me? Am I being arrogant? Did this even work? What did I do? Oh, you know what? Maybe it's because it's cold. Let's put it on the super scientific hot plate. Oh, okay. That's a little bit better. That's what I was hoping was going to happen. So, the red fumes that you see coming off are nitrogen dioxide fumes. And those are the ones that will kill you if you inhale them too much. However, I'm outside and... The good thing about them being red fumes is you can see them, so they're easy to avoid. And this part sped up a little bit. This is really cool to watch. I'm really loving watching the little bits of copper bounce around in there. Nitric acid becomes azeotropic at around 68%. When it becomes azeotropic, it's very difficult to separate from the water. There are a few ways that you can distill it past that and make it more concentrated than 68%. Unfortunately, I don't have the distillation apparatuses needed to do such a thing, or I would probably try. When it gets close to 90%, it starts to produce red fumes when it's exposed to air, and it's called red fuming nitric acid. When it gets more pure, like above 95%, it starts to produce white fumes when it's exposed to air, and it's called white fuming nitric acid. I don't know if you noticed or not, but the little bits of copper are actually having such a good reaction that some of them are actually not only riding on top of the liquid, but they're riding on top of the foam. So I don't have the equipment to do a titration either to figure out exactly what percentage nitric acid I made here. But just watching this copper reaction, I would say that 60% would be a conservative estimate. For $4 and a little bit of time, I made 200 milliliters of this acid. When I first got into refining precious metals. I wish that there would have been a video like this that showed me this method. I watched every video that I possibly could about nitric acid and did a lot of reading to find this method. Paying $70 a liter might not be that bad of a deal if you're refining thousands of dollars worth of gold that you got for a really good price. But if you're trying to strip a few grams of silver off some silver plate that you paid a pretty good price for, it's definitely not worth it. 
if you have access to the sulfuric acid and the potassium nitrate to use this method, then you can make some nitric acid where you can try to dissolve some silver or make some aqua regia and dissolve some gold. One other important thing, when you're storing this nitric acid, you want to make sure that you use a glass bottle with a PTFE plastic lid. I normally don't ask in my videos, but if you like this video, if you learn something, take the time to subscribe, like, share, comment, and watch my other videos because all my videos are pretty much connected. If you are able to and you like my work, please consider checking out my Patreon page and supporting me in that way. I would greatly appreciate it. I'm working really hard to bring good videos and good information to YouTube. The end.